The Magneto Ignition was the company's first successful in-house development. It ingeniously solved a fundamental problem of all combustion engines, namely engine speed. The major breakthrough came when a car fitted with Bosch Ignition won a famous international race. Then everyone wanted this device. Everyone, of course, meaning those people who actually owned a car. And there were not many of them. The motorist community in Germany was very small at the time, compared to France and the United States, where it was much larger. Anyone who wanted to sell their automotive products had to market them there. The company was still small. It had only 20 associates when it started to expand internationally. The first step was basically to find an agent, ideally someone who was already established in the country. The next thing was to open up a local sales office and then, ultimately, a manufacturing facility. In the first decade of the 20th century, cars became increasingly common. They were no longer merely the playthings of a select group of wealthy motorists. Trucks were now transporting goods. Buses were taking passengers to their destinations. Fire engines were driving to fires. A large number of these vehicles were fitted with Bosch ignition systems worldwide. Just before the First World War, Bosch was generating more than 80% of its sales in markets outside Germany. Yet, in 1914, Germany went to war against these same countries, ultimately plunging the company's business into deep crisis. After the First World War, and even during the war, the company's assets abroad were confiscated, and not only its assets, but also its license and trademark rights, which was almost worse. Bosch found itself left with nothing, 20 years of successful international growth, up in smoke. And on top of that, Germany had lost the war. Its products were shunned abroad. Yet one thing stuck in people's minds, the outstanding quality associated with the Bosch name. History repeated itself during the Second World War. It was exactly the same. The sales offices and manufacturing facilities outside Germany were expropriated and Bosch had to start again from scratch. Robert Bosch died in 1942 at the age of 80. His successors managed to re-establish long-standing contacts with overseas partners and to rebuild the company for the third time. They created such secure foundations for the company's global presence that it has grown steadily to the present day mastering the ever tougher challenges of globalization while at the same time becoming established in local markets.